In today's video, we are here at Pacific Corn Market in Bangkok. It is the largest secondhand market here in Bangkok, and I love treasure hunting. So let's go take a look and see what we can find today. actually several buildings like this out here and there's tons of stuff here everything from used clothes to new clothes hats there's toys there's electronics if you can think of it you can find it here at Pativa Corn Market this is really overwhelming holy smokes look at this we just got a ton of cassettes over here let's see what we got here top billboards America's greatest hits just tons of cassettes, something you definitely don't see in a lot of markets uh, in the U.S. It's becoming more and more popular, so people are definitely collecting cassettes even more. Tell right cup. Ten baht. Okay. So these are all 10 baht, Yisip baht, so they're basically about 35 cents each. Clothing is definitely a big part of this market. There are so many clothing vendors here selling shirts, hats, everything else at really reasonable prices. I'm seeing shirts for as low as 20 baht. We gotta keep ducking here, um, which is less than a dollar and all sorts of other things. This is really impressive. If you're looking for used clothing or any kind of used stuff or even new stuff, this Pativa Corn Market here is hands down the biggest market here in Bangkok. I'll put the link in the description below. So make sure you check it out if you're uh, into bargain hunting or just looking around at vintage stuff. Let's see what kind of stuff we got here. We got some flashlights. Oh, here we go. Just what you need, a stun gun. <laughs> But so much stuff here at this market. It's just really overwhelming with all the different things. Everything from plumbing here. I mean, just look at this. We've got brand new Panasonic phones, wired speaker phone systems, two lines uh, made in Japan, brand new in the box. These look like they're probably from the late 90s, early 2000s. Very cool. It's actually a little bit quiet today because there's supposed to be rain expected. But I gotta tell you that for me, coming to these markets, the hardest thing is not buying a bunch of stuff. You see, I spent 25 years as a vintage toy dealer. I also sold vintage electronics and a whole bunch of other things. So for me to see deals and not being able to buy them is just killing me. I just can't, I can't ship it. I don't wanna start my business up here again in Thailand, but there's so many things everywhere I go here, especially if I see good vintage toys. I've already seen some really cool things at some other markets that I just couldn't bring myself to buy because there was just not much I could do with it, but there was a lot of profit to be made. There's so many things here that I don't need, but I really want. I'm definitely gonna have to buy some stuff. Tell me, do you enjoy going to secondhand markets, vintage markets, looking through things? Um, I'm curious to hear from you guys if that's something you enjoy to do here in Thailand or in your country. Let me know down in the comments below. I think I see something that I need in my life. I have been looking for a motorbike of my very own, so what about this? Maybe I can <laughs> ride this thing around. They've even got new products. For instance, I just bought this shampoo at the store the other day. It was 180, here it's 100. So you can definitely buy some brand new things at markets like this as well. I haven't seen these Kodak 110 cameras in a long time. This is really pretty cool. Tell right cup. Okay, so 25 bucks. I'm still not great with the numbers and I was wrong. That was not 25 baht, it was 200 Thai baht, which is right around $6. It's an old 110 camera and even if it has film in it or you find film, it's likely going to be ruined because of the heat here in Thailand. So you won't be able to process it and see any photos. And just like most markets, there are vendors here that have permanent stalls like this where they can leave their things here. There are also vendors who come here just once in a while to sell their household goods. But I have the impression that most of these people are here full time and this is their full time business. Not vans, but vast. And while I still don't understand why people wear these elephant pants, I'm sure they're comfortable. The graphics are just a little strange for me. I do have an idea for something with elephant pant material. So maybe one of the future episodes, you will see Serge wearing something made out of elephant pant material. And here we have clothing that is all five Thai baht. So you can pick up any of this clothing and it's all five baht each. And if you're looking for an even bigger bargain, these bags over here, these are 40 Thai baht for a bag or three for a hundred. And 40 Thai baht is a little over a dollar. So you're basically getting a whole bag of clothing for a dollar. And this bag is about a meter tall, actually a little bit taller than that. Holy crap, that is a good deal. 
absolutely a ton of clothing here for five baht. I mean, there's piles everywhere I go. And here, I just came across another pile. Everything here is five Thai baht. So we're looking about the equivalent of, I would say, 15 cents a piece. Are you guys following me on Instagram? It's Life with Sergi. I'm going to put the description down here, also the link in the description. And at this time, if I can ask you, give this video a thumbs up, share with a friend if you're enjoying my content, because that really helps the YouTube algorithm get my videos out to more people, and in turn helps me create more and more videos, because I know you guys enjoy them. I'm definitely going to have to pick up myself a couple of t-shirts here in a little bit, but let's continue on now and see the rest of the market. We've got a lot more cassette tapes over here, CDs, and we've got a lot of VHS over here, stacks of VHS. And if you are a hunter for bargains or treasure, I'll give you a tip. If you can find the old Disney VHS cassettes still sealed, they sell for a lot of money. You can look on eBay. Like I mentioned, I was a vintage toy dealer on eBay and in many places, 25 years, uh, Real Toy Hunters, this was my logo, this was the name of my toy business, and the Disney VHS tapes, they bring in hundreds if not thousands of dollars. It'll probably be no surprise to you that I'm a little bit lost again, but down the street, there's another part to the Pativacorn market, so make sure you walk around this whole area, because there are many very large tents that have stuff for sale, and don't get run over, because again, you don't have the right of way here. It's a little early for lunch for me, but here is one of the food courts here. There's a lot of food vendors here. Swati cup, any, oops, any noon cup? One need noi cup. Tarai cup? Cup and cup. But it's definitely not too early for a watermelon smoothie because it is quite hot. I know you're gonna be surprised. Hot in Thailand. Shocker, melon smoothie acquired, and this came in a 30 Thai baht, which is right around 90 cents. Mmm, delicious as always. I'm 100% sure that is not filtered ice, but I think uh, after four months here, my stomach has gotten used to it and I can deal with the uh, local germs or bacteria. So what if I want the piece of clothing that's all the way on the bottom of this pile? You're gonna have to dive in here and dig for it. A lot of people love doing this stuff. I gotta be honest with you guys, so far the only thing I've bought is this watermelon smoothie for 30 Thai baht. I'm seeing some hats, some shirts, maybe some shorts that I like, but not quite exactly what I'm looking for. And I don't want to buy something just for the sake of buying it. So I'm going to keep looking, we're going to keep walking around, and I'll show you some more of what we got out here. Here's something I haven't seen in a while. These are just really fun. And you guys remember these uh, Viewmasters? And this is actually the 3D one. Very, very cool. You basically look through them and you pull the lever and there's a reel in here. Oops, if I don't break it, there's a, basically a reel in here that you cycle through and you can see all the different pictures. And just as a side note, I got to tell you guys, flipping stuff is a great side hustle. You can buy things at garage sales or markets like this and then sell them online or sometimes vice versa. But there's always opportunities to buy and flip stuff. I have been selling things since I was probably my early teens, buying stuff, flipping it. It's just something that I'm really good at. I'm good at seeing value. And if you can figure out something that you're good at in this kind of a niche, whether it's clothing, electronics, toys, it doesn't matter what it is you can buy and sell stuff. This is the business that I would recommend to everybody because you can start with very little money, even with the things you have at home, start selling those, but you gotta reinvest your profits back into other things and you can make a good amount of money. I made a full-time income buying and selling things for eight years before I moved here to Thailand. So if I can do it, I know you can do it. Definitely one of the last things I expected to see here were Miller and Budweiser signs. Very collectible in the US and I'm sure collectible here as well. Swati Cup, uh, Tao Rai Cup? 3,000? Okay. So that's 3,000 Thai baht, which is going to be about, uh, what, $100, a little bit less, about $90. That's about right what those are going for. One of the things I'm wondering is how they decide which shirts are which. These are 35 Thai baht. And if we look through some of these, uh, we got like AAA, Cavalry Division. They're kind of generic shirts. Looks like some giveaways. There's some cool shirts here, but then over here, the 50 Thai baht shirts, and these are basically about $1.25. 
I don't understand why this one would be 5T Taibot or the Baton Rouge Physical Therapy shirt. Really interesting how things are, are priced here, but definitely some great bargains if you're looking for some t-shirts. And I'm trying to find a black one that I would consider wearing. That is not going to be one of them. I think I'm now permanently lost in shirt land. I'm trying to find some of the other sections that have other things other than clothing. There's so much here. I mean, I love these markets. It's interesting to go into different countries and go to these markets because you get an idea of what kind of stuff people buy, what they wear, and when you start looking at the used items, you kind of get an understanding of what people buy. It's kind of like almost a little archeological dig. I mean, it's not the same as going through ruins, but still, I find it a very interesting way because you get to find out what kind of things people were buying, uh, you know, maybe 10, 20, 40 years ago, and what's popular now. And here's another tip for you bargain hunting or looking for the best stuff at markets. You gotta come here early. I came way too late. I came at 10 in the morning. Most of the time people come to these things at six in the morning and always head to the back because what you wanna see is you wanna see the new people. And the reason they're in the back is because the vendors in the front have paid for their spots in advance. So always go to the back of the markets. That's where you'll see people selling things on the ground, kind of like this behind me. And that's the stuff you really want to look at because those are not regular sellers. A lot of times they don't know the value of their things and that's where you can find the best bargains. I'm 100% looking for a bicycle, but this one is way too small for me. When you go to any kind of secondhand market, you can absolutely bargain with people. But sometimes in places like this, you could start bargaining over the equivalent of 10 or 15 cents US. So don't be a jerk. I mean, if something's a low enough price, just pay the people here. They've had a hard year, as most people have in the world because of the pandemic. So don't bargain over little things, but you can obviously offer a lower price on anything you see. The more I walk, the more parts of this market I discover. It goes into all directions, and I finally found something that I want. Yes, bathroom, over there, definitely need to go. Make sure you always carry change with you because a lot of the bathrooms in a lot of these places are gonna charge you. So five baht, but you get a nice clean bathroom. As with any market, make sure you bring plenty of cash and bring small bills. While some people will take uh, phone transfer, nobody's gonna take credit cards here. But not to worry because we also have ATMs here so you can withdraw funds. More clothing, all sorts of things, and I think I finally found the food. It's getting time for lunch, so I'm gonna grab something to eat here. Let's take a look and see what looks tasty, but they have got another giant food court over here. Swati Kap, Sibha uh, Kap. Chai cup. So we're gonna have uh, probably chicken. Pad Krapau guy is what I'm gonna have. It's rice, chicken. It's kind of my standard go-to. And also some of these vegetables that we have over here. Rolling the dice again here with uh, Diet Coke with ice that might or might not be purified. And so this is what I got, guys. This came out to be a total of 60 Thai baht. It was 50 Thai baht for all the food and 10 Thai baht for five of the fried cucumbers. So we're looking at approximately uh, $2 for all of this, including the soda. As always, came prepared with my own paper towels, napkins, more for sweat than for the food, but this looks delicious. I already dumped most of the spicy sauce on it, so I might regret this, might not, but let's try it and find out. Mm. Oh, these uh, deep fried cucumbers are actually quite sweet. I wasn't expecting that, very good. But well, we got some pork, not chicken. I said chicken, but it's not. It's definitely pork. Take a bite here. Mm. You know, at least for me, the street food here never disappoints. I mean, this is just another delicious dish. It's very simple. It's rice, egg, cucumbers. We have some pork and it just goes so well together. So I enjoy these kind of meals. I'm one of the few foreigners here, it's all locals. This is the kind of place I love coming and ingraining myself in the local culture. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this meal and then we'll continue on. That was absolutely delicious. You know, really good meal here. And that whole thing, including the drink, came out to be two dollars US. Okay, let's go see uh, what else I missed. I know there's still more of this market to check out. This is an interesting phenomenon here because now it is 12.30 and this market is actually fuller than when I got here at 10 a.m. Usually markets die down around this time, but here, it's like everybody's finally waking up, coming out of their homes and are out here shopping. So apparently you can come here late as well. Wouldn't be a market in any country if it didn't have a ton of different tools and men digging through them. It's something universal. We just love digging through tools and buying stuff like that. Tarai cup. 
Oh, well. I need a new wallet, and that North Face wallet was tempting at a thousand Thai baht, which is around thirty dollars. But it's just a little too bulky for what I'm looking for. So the search goes on. I'm not a Coca-Cola fan, but I like Pepsi. So let's see what size shirt that is. This looks like it might actually fit me. This is a large. Tall right cup, Roy. Okay. Roy bot cup. Cup and cup. Cup and cup. Whoops. Bought a $3 shirt and almost broke the phone. <laughs> All right, finally got myself something, a Pepsi shirt. Pretty happy with that. At least I didn't come here and not get anything. But I think I can find something else. So random story time. Pepsi has a special place in my heart because in Russia or the former Soviet Union uh, that I lived in up until 1980 before moving to America, Pepsi was the only soda available there. There was no Coca-Cola because Pepsi had the market. So I just grew up drinking Pepsi and that's why I tend to have a little more of affinity for it. And also there's a lot less Pepsi advertising stuff than Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola was much more prolific. So there, there's a random story you didn't need to hear about Surge and why I like Pepsi. Tip number 3,412 for shopping at markets. Make sure you bring a backpack or some kind of a bag. They will give you plastic bags, but I find that having a backpack or maybe even an Ikea bag, if you plan to do a lot of shopping, is the best way to go at any market for you to be able to carry stuff around. All right, let's see what else we can find. Oh, what is this over here? Nintendo N64 shirt. That looks pretty cool. What size is this thing? Uh, it's a double XL. I have to eat more to fit into that. I don't know why, but I have the urge to buy a bandana. You can never go wrong with having a bandana to uh, use for many different things. Now, if I can just find someone who will take my money, that would be even better. And there's the gentleman taking the money. Ah, cup and cop. So we've got a t-shirt and a black bandana. I'm not sure you can hear that rain in the background, but it is absolutely pouring now. Well, I gotta get from this tent to that tent somehow, so let's just run for it. Woo. Just a little water. It's definitely been a fun market here. There's so much cool stuff here. I could definitely spend hours here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you check out one of these other videos that I'm putting up here on the screen. And as always, don't forget to take care of yourselves. Bye, guys.